We're gonna be doing something a little bit different today. We are gonna be doing a review. It's of this, it's the Canon ProGraph Pro 1000 A2 printer. It's a lovely big A2 sized printer, print up to A2 as you can imagine. And I've been using this pretty much nonstop for the last two days. I've really been testing things out, trying different layouts, borders. This is actually a borderless design as well, so you can print with no border, which is really, really impressive. But we'll get onto that in a minute. But the reason we're gonna approach this in a slightly different way is when it comes to reviewing cameras and lenses, I'm using those sort of things day in, day out, and I have been for the past who knows how many years. It's a long time. I'm very comfortable with that kind of stuff. But when it comes to printers, I'm not as familiar. I don't use printers nearly as often. I haven't used a Canon printer before. And while I'm a massive advocate of printing your work, I think it's actually a really important step in photography. I think it allows you to see your photos in a different way. And I think it actually allows you to become a better photographer. It's not something that I do that often myself. Now, probably we've all sent off for prints, but I've got to say, actually having your own printer that you can then actually set up the prints how you want and watch it come out is something extra special. We are gonna look at this from a few different angles, but primarily this review is gonna be from someone, i.e. me, who is not so used to having a printer in their home office. So this isn't a case of upgrading from a previous model to a newer model. This is the case of going into the world of printing, getting a printer for yourself. Now, of course you could still upgrade. This seems like a very, very capable model, but I'm personally going to approach this more from the perspective of someone who's getting into printing. And this is quite the printer to be getting into printing with. So like I mentioned, you can print all the way up to A2 with this printer, which is lovely. That means you can get some nice big prints, but of course you're not limited to A2. It's very easy to switch up how you want to print. Actually on the printer itself, you've got these controls here and then a nice big LCD screen, which shows you all of the controls that you need and all of the detail that you need to be able to set up how you want to print. You can print A3, A4, A5, you can go smaller, you can go different sizes, different kind of ratios. There's really an awful lot of versatility here for how you want to print. And it's all extremely easy to control just on the screen here. That's something that I was initially a little bit concerned about when setting this up. How easy is this gonna to be to use? Turns out, extremely. It's almost plug and play level. So in terms of actual setup, this is quite a heavy bit of kit. Realistically, you probably want two people to be lifting this. It's quite big, it's quite heavy. It's not really a problem. It's not even really a downside because you're probably gonna position this once and then leave it. I actually think it looks very nice as well. I think it's a good looking bit of kit and I would happily have it in my office kind of permanently there. In fact, I would probably just put it on this unit behind me. I think it would actually fit basically perfectly and that'd be a nice thing to have on there. Once you've popped it in its position though, really it is just about plugging it in in terms of the power and then how you want to connect it to wherever you're gonna print from. Now I was printing from my computer, which meant I used a USB cable, really easy basically plug and play. You can also do it wirelessly as well, but to be honest, it's just as easy as to do USB, which is how I set this up. Now, in terms of actually setting this up with the computer, like I say, I plugged it in, the computer recognized it, and I was able to print straight away. I did actually go onto Canon's website and download some drivers for it as well, just because I felt like I probably should do a little bit more than just plug it in. That was very easy as well. I found them straight away, downloaded them, I ran them so they installed, it recognized the printer, all good, all sorted all set up, ready to go. I was able to print from Lightroom. I was able to print from Photoshop. I was able to print from Windows directly. And I also downloaded Canon's own software, Canon Print Studio, which allows you to really set out the layout. It just works very well with Canon's own printers like this. It allows you to set the layout of how you want things to print, borders, color management, all that kind of stuff. However, pretty much all of the time I was using this, I was actually deferring to the printer for the color management. And that kind of brings me on to another point. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to printing your work. There's the printer itself. How good is that? What size can it print to? All that kind of stuff. There's the software you use on your computer, but then there's a lot of other stuff to consider. For example, how well calibrated or how accurate is your monitor compared to how it's gonna come out on the printer? And there's a couple of different ways you can do that. You could try and calibrate your monitor specifically to your printer, which is probably the best way to go. That might involve an additional tool. You also might wanna think about the paper that you're gonna use, and then of course the inks as well, because a printer is only going to be as good as the paper and the ink that you supply it with. A little bit like how a camera will only be as good as the lens that you use. Now that might sound like there's a lot to think about, a lot to sort out, 
But actually, I found that this printer in particular made this extremely easy. Very straightforward to set up. First up, I didn't actually feel like I needed to calibrate my monitor particularly to this printer. I did a few tests and it was working absolutely as intended. Everything was coming out as I saw it on the screen and they look beautiful. Now, as I mentioned just before I started talking about all this, I was ticking a box when I was going to print to defer to the Canon printer to handle the color management because I wanted to see how it would do with that kind of task. Turns out, really, really well. Everything just looks fantastic coming out of this printer. And that's color, that's black and white, that's lots of different stuff. It all looks very accurate and very, just very good, very sharp. The colors are great, the black and white looks great, the contrast is amazing. I'm really, really impressed by that. So that kind of immediately alleviated all my worries about that. And I don't feel like it's something that I would have to really address much, or if at all, when it comes to this. In terms of paper, there's a lot of different paper that you can use. You need to decide between matte, between gloss. But let me be honest with you, this is really fun. That's a really, really fun process. And the best thing I could recommend with that is maybe get a couple of different types and just print, see what you think. See what you like, see what stands out to you. For me, for example, I thought going into this, I would really want to print on matte. I thought that would be the way forward for me. Turns out, I'm really enjoying some of this glossy paper. So that would probably be what I would choose. And the same with the inks, it's probably just best to go for the Canon inks. And the reason for that is you're using the Canon printer, the Canon inks are realistically going to work particularly well with this printer. And once you start thinking about it like that, it kind of takes away a little bit of the headache of thinking about all of these different things and deciding on a lot of stuff. You can just sort of get going with things. Okay, so let's address something else, which is why would you own your own printer when you could just send off a print? Well, there's a few different options, right? There's a few different reasons that you might want to do something like this, especially with a printer of this size and this capability. If you're able to print A2 size stuff, first of all, that's gonna look great on your wall. There's also a massive convenience factor, right? So when you go and take photos, maybe you go out and shoot, you get a particularly beautiful photo. You could just print that straight away. And there's something to be said for doing that. There's also something to be said for the experience of printing yourself. Your own work coming out of your printer is something extra special. And it's a little bit like the reason people buy record players or expensive and very complicated coffee machines that you need to do lots of things. You can defer a lot of this stuff off to someone else. You could just play your music through Spotify, but there's something extra special about doing it yourself, setting it up, the kind of manual task of doing it. And when it comes to this printing, you get it within five to 10 minutes rather than within a day, two days, a week, some of that. Someone once said to me that they bought a printer so that they could have frames all around their house and they swap out the photo in them every six months. And I thought that was very, very clever. I thought it was a really, really good use of doing this. If you have, let's say 10, 15 frames around your house and you're swapping them out every six months, that's a beautiful way of using your printer within your own home life. It also allows you to print things off for other people. So if you take a lot of photos, let's say you're semi-pro or professional or amateur, whatever it might be, you can print your photos as gifts for other people. It's a really nice thing. It's a very personal and can be a very touching gift to give to people. If you're a professional, it also means you can print your own prints at home and sell them. And that cuts down the middleman, the kind of cost of doing all that. You don't have to order, let's say 25 prints just to have them sitting in your home so you can sell them. You can print them as and when someone wants to buy one. It's a great way of doing things. But to be honest with you, my overall thoughts of this printer, the actual prints are looking superb. Really, really good. I'm extremely happy with how they're coming out. They look professional, they look beautiful, and I cannot wait to get some of them up on the wall. The actual using the printer has been a dream. I cannot believe how easy it is. Especially, you know, I remember when printers were not super fun to set up and then they wouldn't work and you wouldn't know why and you, you know. This has been the opposite of that. Once I kind of got this on its table, I just plugged it in and I'm away. I'm using Lightroom, I'm using Photoshop, I'm using Windows, I'm using Canon's own software. All of it is very, very straightforward. I was able to test things, change the borders. So easy, so easy to just play around and get this doing everything that I wanted to do. Ultimately, this has been just an extremely nice printer to use. If you're on the fence about it, what I will say is that it's so much easier to use than you think it's going to be. 
but with a lot of depth for how you want to use it. It's very versatile in the way you want to print, whether that's actually in the printer itself or on the computer. And the controlling it could not be easier with these controls and the LCD screen. Like I mentioned, there's links down in the description to check out all of this stuff. If you've not printed your own work before, you definitely should give that a go because it is such a lovely part of photography. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well because there's new content all the time. We'll have the review of the smaller printer sometime in the next few months, I would imagine. But otherwise, stay tuned for lots of reviews, lots of tutorials, lots of stuff. I'll see you in the next video, but as always, thanks for watching.